Hello everyone, this is Admiral Playdowski bringing you Atlantic Fleet. The Battle of the Atlantic continued as Germany. Right, these ships have to make their way to port. Two more turns and they'll be in Kiel and Wilhelmshaven. Scharnhorst with ten turns to go and Leipzig with two. Still a long time, but never mind. Oh! In the East Greenland Sea, the damaged running away fleet in sunny weather in week 1 of March 1940. The heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spey. The heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Lutzau with heavy damage already. And the destroyer Z3 with medium damage have detected an enemy contact at noon. The destroyers Jersey and Ottawa, the Germans have the initiative. We need to make quick work of these ships. Like, really quick. This is the undamaged Admiral Graf Bay. Oof, right, where, are, where is everyone? So you can go for. How far is the Ottawa? I'd say both of them are too far away. And the jersey has more guns at the front, so I'm actually going to go with... Go for the jersey with both. Right, 10.7 is suggested. Bring it up to 10.7. High explosive shells. Wind. Oh, I'm going to move it... About... I'll say about here, maybe. Fire. Open fire. And those looked closer than they seemed. I swear that all the middle superstructure was gone. How did they rebuild the ship whilst out at sea? How how does how how do we <laughs> how do we do that? Do we have a secret base I'm unaware of? We must do it seems, we must do it. It's the only logical explanation. But nevertheless Let's go. Right. You will also target the New Jersey. 13 3 is suggested. Seems a bit much. I'll go 12 6. Let's move the um, binoculars. Mm. Correct? Or are we just. It's just, it's just going straight in our face. I went correct. Fire! Oh, yes. Yes! We've damaged them a little bit. Good. Z3, you're not really, really in a position to make smoke, so just steam along as you are. We're opening fire the jersey. And they're going for the Z3. Ah, interesting. I'm guessing you don't know what the uh, Lutzow has been through then. Yeah, also I expected no action. They're too, they're too far away, you see, that's, the, that's their problem. They're just too far away. Right, so 10.7 was... Short, actually, it's a little bit short. I'll go 11 then. And I'll also adjust slightly for the wind. Fire. Good. Two hits scored. And the jersey has been sunk. Excellent. Good. 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 That's very good. Right. Let's how you can therefore begin targeting the Ottawa then. And that's good. The Ottawa's still out of range. 24,000 yards, they're, they're not shooting anytime soon. Um, no real idea what sort of elevation to use, so I'll just go 
there's 83. Again, no correction. Fire! Alright, not super ultra far away. Z3 can move along, no problem at all. Ottawa's still too far away? Yes, still too far away. Although I'm guessing they are flanking it to get into range as quickly as possible. Still too far, I would argue, but still too far at 19,500. Right. Go about here, maybe. Uh, 43 is suggested. Yeah, I'll go 43. I don't really have a guess. Fire! Looking good. Yep, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. We clipped some of the um, superstructure components. So that was long. Uh, very long, actually, it seems. They're saying 15.8 now. I'll go low 16 somewhere. 16.3 should be good enough, I think. Fire. Go on. Yeah, that's, that's... That's enough, it seems, to sink the Ottawa. Wasn't expecting that sort of result after these shells landed, but... Very well. That's quite alright with that. Um, I guess just move and say done. Yep, that's all finished. Action report on the British side. The destroyer Jersey was sunk for 1,690 tons. The destroyer Otto was sunk for 1,375 tons. On the German side, the heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spey received no damage. The heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Lutzow received no additional damage, so she leaves with heavy damage. And the destroyer Z3 receives no additional damage, meaning she leaves with medium damage. Warship town sunk on the British side, 3065. Merchant ship town sunk on the British side, none this time. On the German side, nothing sunk in either category. 3065 were now earned. Ooh, interesting. Uh, in the United Kingdom, in rainy weather, in week one of March 1940, we have our trusted UK submarine fleet of U-65, 66, 67 and 68 with U-65 having light damage and U-68 with medium damage and they've all picked up an enemy contact at night it is the destroyer Vendetta escorting a merchant ship large freighter the Germans have the initiative so this shouldn't really be too tricky we've got four submarines mind you if they if they want to they can make it tricky they can make it very tricky for you. Nope, too far away. The freight is close, but the destroyer isn't. I want to get close to the... Oh, actually. If I could, if I'll turn one more and it's still a similar distance, we could actually be firing quite soon. Uh, right, they're uh, just very far away. <laughs> Both of them are. U67 not really getting an opportunity to get it, get stuck in. U68 possibly if she can keep pace with the freighter. But we'll see what happens. And they're turning to pause. Interesting, that's interesting. That means they're turning towards my submarines. 4,700, if I turn again, 4,500, time, time to get those torpedo tubes going, they're going at 9 knots, so it's pretty simple really, just 8.5 and 9.5, and I do believe both of those will hit, meaning we will have sunk the escort which means the merchant falls immediately after. 
the rest and you can just all move forward. There we go. But the Vendetta has been sunk. That final torpedo was in danger of potentially not hitting. I want to be a little bit more careful next time. Sink merchants and withdraw. Action report. On the British side, the destroyer Vendetta was sunk for 1,300 tons, and one merchant ship large freight was sunk for 8,700 tons. On the German side, no change relative to the start of the battle. U65 light damage, U66 and U67 no damage, U68 medium damage. Warship tons sunk on the British side, 1,300. Merchant ship tons sunk on the British side, 8,700. 1,300 renown earned. Oh, it's a similar similar sort of setup. In the North Atlantic in week one of March 1940, in mm, good weather I would say, sunny weather, Submarine U-27 has detected an enemy contact in the morning. It's the destroyer onslaught and it's escorting a merchant ship large freighter. The Germans have the initiative. Mind you, see this is this is where it gets tricky. We only have one submarine in this sector. So what I need to do is really, really, you know, be careful here. No, no aircraft. Not in the middle of the ocean, you're not getting them. How far away is the onslaught? Oh, very far away. Let's see if they'll continue to turn. If they completely turn around, then they'll start heading towards us. No, they're not. They're just doing that. 5, 8. 6, 3. Mm -hmm. We're not getting any closer, so I'll just do a 3 turn torpedo shot. Uh, let's have a look. They're going it around... I'll call it 10 knot. 1.2 is here. I would say about 1.5 degrees down. About a knot, maybe. Mm, I'll go with 9.5. It's so unnatural for me to do this. Though. Like I'm, Everything is screaming that that's too close. Because we're at 6, 4 almost. But at the same time, they're only going at 8.5 knots. And for this torpedo not to hit, for them, for this to not hit, the stern would have to clear this line. Let's fire one torpedo now, just as a sort of "hello, here I am" type of thing. It's a rude introduction, I would say, pretty much. That's how I describe it. It won't hit on this turn. Uh, I guess. Get turned towards the destroyer now. Start figuring out the course to go that way. Here we go. Pretty much right in the middle. On Onslaught's gonna get um, go a little bit berserk, I'm guessing now. Yep, here we go. Movement. Large freighter has sunk. They couldn't quite take that one torpedo. So that means it's one of those rare occasions where I won't actually go into the um, sink merchant and withdraw section. Because there's only one large freighter there and we've sunk it already. We'll sink the onslaught as well. Oh, waiting a little bit long. I was worried they might fire this time, but nope. Just about managed to um to stay out of the range that they would have opened fire in. Action. Move it forward. They'll move forward. Whilst I'll just move a little bit forward. Time to surface. We can keep flank because we won't get to within than a thousand yards. Yep, that's good. That's a good range. 
Right, um, torpedoes, let's put... Yeah, go on, let's put one right there. And one under the turrets. Like that. And fire away. Whoa! Magazine detonation from the onslaught. Fireworks. From the onslaught. And they're also sinking. The large freighter just sank over there now. Action report on the British side. The destroyer Onslaught was sunk for 1,610 tons. And one merchant ship large freighter sunk for 7,800 tons. On the German side, the submarine U-27 receives no damage. Warship tons sunk on the British side, 1,610. Merchant ship tons sunk on the British side, 7,800. 1,610 were now earned. So, we didn't even have to go into the um, sink merchants and withdraw category. We did it manually for once. Right, let's continue the journey that you guys are making back, back to port. Have we got any more squares here? No, it's still eight, just as we had before. Ah! My question is... What is a convoy doing in the Norwegian Sea? But anyway, it is in the Norwegian Sea. In partially sunny weather, the heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spey, along with the heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Lutzau with heavy damage, and the destroyer Z3 with medium damage, have detected an enemy contact. In the afternoon, it is a convoy of... L merchant ship large freighters, C2 and C3 freighters, and one T2 tanker escorted by the destroyers Eskimo and Kelly. The British have the initiative in week 1.5 of March 1940. I wonder if we've got air support out of here. Because we haven't taken Norway yet. That happens in June, I believe, of 1940, that Norway's. Norway is part of Germany. But anyway, um, yeah, they're trying to make a smoke screen. I'm not sure if that's to protect themselves or the convoy. But if it's to protect the convoy, then the wind is really not on their side today. Uh, let's have a look. Um, you're at 15.3, and you're just way, way out. So yeah, both both of my um, ships will focus on the Kelly for the time being, and then hopefully we can switch fire quickly whilst the Eskimo is still out of our gunnery range. I'll put the guns about here because there is a wind coming, but I'm not sure how strong it is. Fire! Short. That's fine. Uh, I know, I know, I know. You're, hit. You're very low in the water. I know, Lutso, I know. You've done great work. And well, as soon as your pumps aren't actually damaged, we can, you know, we can just go to flank, I guess. 17.5 uh, is suggested. It's a little bit high. 16.4 instead. That's a C2 freighter, that's not the, the destroyer, is it? Uh, let's hop over and do this manually. Yeah, I figured 17 was too high. 12.7 is suggested now. Well, that's much better. Right, now we can adjust properly. The destroyer really sort of blended in with the freighter there. Good job. Fire. Good this was to high explosives though. <laughs> you don't want armor piercing for a destroyer. Yeah, this destroyer can just move forwards unless she starts getting shot at. In which case, smoke and ooh now then I didn't realise I had aircraft out here. These are torpedo bombers. Do 
know what then? I'll deploy one torpedo bomber for this little destroyer over here that we've got. Um, I haven't done a torpedo bombing run in such a long time. This will be the first time in a very long time that we, we actually will do it. Right, I'm going to say about here maybe, because they're picking up speed. There's no doubt about it. So will the stern clear this? I don't think it will. Alright, let's launch. And... Go! I hope I've dropped it too early. I think I've dropped it too early. No action from the Eskimo. Oh, they've just moved forwards. Kelly fires with the front turrets at the... Oh, who are they firing at? And scoring a disgraceful hit on... It's the Admiral Grosh Bay, I think. That torpedo's not going to hit, is it? No! Oh! That would have got them! That would have got them! Oh! 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 oh, oh. Oh, not good, not good, I dropped it too early, and I thought I dropped it too late. <laughs> Interesting how that works out, isn't it? I think I'm too late, I'm too early. Alright, 11 was a little bit short, let's go up to about 11.4. Let's get the guns adjusted a little bit. Fire! There we go. It's really satisfying when you adjust and then the wind just pushes the shells into the target. Really satisfying. Oh, they've stayed afloat. Well, that's pretty good. Pretty good, I would say. 12.6 was short. They want us to go up by one degree. Um, I actually am somewhat inclined to agree. Maybe even 13.6. I'll go 13 4 because they have actually moved forward a tiny little bit, I'm guessing. Guns adjusted. Fire! They're gone! They're gone! Underwater damage caused them to go under. Excellent. Right, um, Z3, you will attempt another airstrike. Let's do another one. Because this one, th these, um, this torpedo is missing. Like, I'm sorry, but it just is. There's no way it's hitting it. Destroy moves forward, torpedo clears it. So we'll do the exact same thing. Around about here, I would say, maybe. Launch the aircraft, and this time we'll actually do it properly. Go! Right, that was much later. Hardly travelled, but hopefully we can get away with that. Oh, it's going to clip it, I think, just about. Here comes one, here comes another. Yep, that's hit it. That's one torpedo hit. How are they doing now? Hmm. Not too bad, actually. It, it, it hit, but it hit in such a way that it's actually not hurt them that much. No need to turn. Right, well, just just fire at them as 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 they are. Right, this is why I cheat a little bit, and I actually sort of use this large phrase of which they say 14.5, and this one for which they say 17.9. So that's a difference of 3.4. I'll go 1.7 higher than that. So about 16.2. Let's go up to 16.2, and let's see whether 16.2 is actually smart. 
stupid or too difficult to say. Oh, they look like a proper convoy, like just a full on line of ships, all interconnected. Look a bit like train carriages, I guess. But anyway, let's not get distracted with the convoy, even though that's what we're going after. The destroyer is the main target for now. Fire! Uh, I'm going to say that that's not that bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to argue that that was not stupid. It's not bad at all. 17.2 for this one, so about half a degree extra, I think. Maybe even 0.4. Little bit extra. I'll go 17.5 on on balance. Uh, let's go about here. Fire. Good decision. Yes, it is a good decision. We even scored a hit. Right, Z3. One more airstrike, please. Make it a good one this time, though. Right, uh... Let's have it go a little bit further. Maybe even about here. Because they will be increasing their speed. Like, they will be. Oh, a little bit of AAA fire still going. Go! Right, if we can make this, which I think we can, this should be really good. Yes! The Eskimo was sunk, and that torpedo would have hit that merchant. Excellent. Well, it may not have been the most elegant torpedo bombing, but we still managed to get the job done. Right, sink merchants and withdraw. Action report. On the British side, the destroyer Eskimo was sunk for 1,850 tons. The destroyer Kelly was sunk for 1,690 tons. And the whole convoy of one T2 tanker, several merchant ship large freighters, C2 and C3 freighters sunk as well. On the German side, the heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spey received light damage from I think it was one hit. The heavy cruiser slash pocket battleship Lutzau received no additional damage, so she leaves with heavy damage, and the destroyer Z3 received no additional damage, meaning she leaves the battlefield with medium damage. Warship ton sunk on the British side 3,540, merchant ship ton sunk on the British side 77,200, 3,540 renown earned. Well, I wanted to end it here, but we'll do this as well. In the West North Atlantic, in week 1.5 of March, March 1940, in mostly sunny weather, the battleship Gneiser now with medium damage, the light cruiser Nuremberg with light damage, and the destroyer Z4 with no damage, have picked up an enemy contact at noon. It is the destroyer Grafton, which is escorting a convoy of, I see, one T2 tanker, one C2 freighter, and C3 freighters, and large freighters. The Germans have the initiative. Right, here we go. And we're charging at each other, head on. Hard as starboard, Gneiser now. We need you to fire at the Grafton with as many guns as we can. 11 4 is suggested. I shall obey because I don't know what else to go for. Uh, wind is blowing a bit to the side and it's kind of strong, so I'll go about here this time. Fire! Ooh, those are close! Those are pretty close. The rest of the ships just move forwards at full. Your help is um, not really required here. Grafton opens up. Firing at the destroyer! 
and those are pretty close or possibly even underwater damage there right that's very naughty of you to be this accurate so early on and for that reason the gnizer now is going to give you a broadside uh, 11 4 was that i'd say maybe 11 2 just a tiny tiny bit i would say we were almost there last time Fire! It's a couple of hits, good. You guys make smoke, therefore. If they're shooting at you, just make smoke. Take on the Gneiser now. Yeah, you're too scared, aren't you? What I'm hoping to do with the smoke screen here is to prevent any shells from hitting the destroyer or the light cruiser before the battle is over. Right, guys are now. Feel free to just move along as you are. Uh, let's have a look. 11.2 was good. I'll go 10.9. Voila. Nope, that's the wrong side. Fire. No, that was long. That was long, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, not so good then if we were long. We don't want to be long or short, we want to be on target. Still firing at my destroyer. Still no hits though, just about. One good salvage from the Gneiser now puts them under. Just FYI. Which stands for, you, for full your information. Yeah, 10-9 was just... no. Very long, they're saying. Um, Alright, point taken. Got down to 9.5 then. Guns can go... around about... possibly maybe even here this time. Fire! Nope. Those weren't very good. Right, let's get you guys out of here because I am actually legitimately scared of something bad happening. Oh, did we not? Oh, never mind. We are exposing our entire ship here. Hopefully, no hits are scored. Good, good. They're long. We've confused them somewhat. and I'll continue to move along. Right, 9.1 they're saying. We were... Was that short or long? Technically on target. I'll go down to 9.2. The correction was a little bit too much this time, so I'll go about here this time. Fire! Yes! That looked better than it was in reality. I'm being honest. There we go, now it's worked. Smoke. No, not quite. They seem to be trying to chase my destroyer. And that's fine, I guess. Let's move the gliding now along. So those were good. 9.2 was very good. It wasn't very good, it was just one hit, I think, but nevertheless, it was alright. I'll go 9.1 this time then. Hopefully we can score a wide variety of hits this time. Fire! It's a great chance, they're exposing their entire ship. Uh, I probably would have wanted those shots to go somewhere else, but if it sinks the grafter, then that's fine. Good. Let's sink the merchants and withdraw. Action report. On the British side, the destroyer Grafton was sunk for 1,800 tons and the T2 tanker along with the C2, C3 and large freighters sunk as well. On the German side, the battleship Gneiser now received no additional damage, meaning she leaves with medium damage. The light cruiser Nuremberg ends with light damage 
Panther's de Destroyer Z4 ends with light damage. Warship Tan sunk on the British side, 1,800. Merchant Ship Tan sunk on the British side, 69,400. 1,800 renown earned. Oh, it's dragging out! It's dragging out. In the Canary Islands, in cloudy weather, it is week 1.5 of March 1940. The submarine U-29 with light damage has detected an enemy contact at noon. It is the destroyers Codrington and Javelin, and they're escorting a T-2 tanker, C-2 freighter, and large freighter. The Germans have the initiative. Right, the destroyer escort is nowhere to be seen, so for that reason, we'll have to just, you know, let them know that we're here and looking for a fight. Uh, 8.3 knots, so that's very slow. I'll put it about, I'll go at 10 exactly. Fire! Right, steaming towards, streaking towards the large freighter. No matter what they do, unless they quickly speed up, they're going to get hit. That's not good enough on this occasion. So hit a midships, could sink them, doesn't have to. But we'll see. Let's damage their propulsion alright. Check the javelin. They'll be going for us now. Move forward. Oh, there they go. Hold fire for the time being. Here we go, Codrington turns. No action, Javelin turns. No action. T2 tank coming into all the merchants. Oh, he's going to continue steaming in this way. I wonder who's going to make it first to us, the Cod Codrington or the Javelin. The Javelin is closer to us, but they've got a sunken uh, freighter here. It's a C2 freighter. So they'll have to negotiate the wreck of that ship. Codrington, however, is further away, but she has a clearer path to get to us. And you can see the, the turning back now. That's not a problem. Yeah, Cod Codrington can just go straight ahead now at flank. Javelin has to do a little bit more work. Of course, in my love, they'll probably meet up at the same time surprised if that happened. In fact, I'm expecting it to happen. Oh, still no action. You're not going to make me surface, are you? Come on. Oh, the Codrington has to negotiate a TZ tanker now. So I do believe the Javelin will get to me first, and the Codrington will be second, meaning I don't have to take them both on at the same time. They've moved backwards, why? Right. Are you too close? We'll see. 4,900. Here we go, that's better. Come here, Javelin. Oh, hang on. We've got distracted here. Dive away quickly. I forgot to dive away. Any damage? Pressure hull with light damage, but we've got a fully maxed out sub here, so they'll have that fixed in no problem. I wasn't sure if that was from before, or from these near misses. I'd like to think that it was, well, now, meaning that we can get it fixed later. Because if we put that in, then that means that, you know, that um, we're in a bit of trouble. In 2,981, <laughs> Backwards and we'll stay submerged just for now. Two seven. They've turned for us, very nice. Now we can surface and just straight away. Surface please. Thank you. 1689 will do us very nicely. Right, um, so, Javelin, let's put one torpedo about here between the turrets, one behind the funnel about here. Go to put nine, go on. There we go. Fire away.
Javelin has been sunk. Superstructure and beta at destroyed in the process. Right, so all we need to do now is just focus on the Codrington down here. Flank, harder port. We've got two torpedoes left, so we should be fine. We can always get a resupply ship trip in should the need arise. Are they not coming closer to me? You're not going to make me go for the T2 tanker, are you? Hello, Codrington, are you, are you just going to not do anything? They're turning round. It's not the most elegant way to turn around, but whatever. No, they're just moving away. Excuse me. Hello? There we go. Come back here, I'm not finished with you yet. Well, strictly speaking, I haven't really started with you either, but <laughs> that, that's, that's fine. That's just a small detail we can gloss over. We don't need to give it a lot of attention. 7 2. They should have us in their sonar. Good, they're moving towards us. Move forward. Oh, no need to turn anymore. No, no, that's fine. Oh, you sneaky little... Oh. Three hits scored, possibly. How are we doing? Propulsion's damage, I can tell already. Propulsion and pressure hold with light damage. You're not as supposed to do that though you're not allowed to do that but they have done that's very cheeky of them I didn't think they'd actually do that just turned and tried to do a broadside the only thing more cheeky than that is trying to sink me with a torpedo which is the way I sink the um, Germans have been playing as Britain no, it's not historically accurate, but the depth charges really aren't that great. I found most of the time they just allow the enemy to get away, or they just cause light damage, and that's not really what I'm trying to do. But anyway, this is the German playthrough. I should be talking about my Royal Navy strategy. Let's surface and go backwards and turn to starboard. One last point I'm playing is. Britain though it's much more difficult. Much more difficult. Because you're escorting all these merchants. Go in between the funnels. Fire. Oh! Magazine detonation. Fireworks from the Codrington. Oh wow. Very violent end, but an end nevertheless. Sink merchants and withdraw. Action reports. On the British side, the destroyer Codrington was sunk for 1,350 tons. The destroyer Javelin was sunk for 1,690 tons. One merchant ship T2 tanker sunk for 22,500 tons. C2 freighter sunk for 5,500 tons. And a large freighter sunk for 8,700 tons. On the German side, the submarine U29. I believe received light damage and warship tons sunk on the British side in total it's 3,040 merchant ship tons sunk on the British side it's a total of 36,700 3,040 were now earned right I do believe we have another red square here on the tonnage wall yes we do let's just check the stats they're mounting. No change from the last episode in terms of um, many of us sunk for Germany. For the UK, it's almost 60 now. 350,000 tons of naval vessels sunk and merchants sunk. Almost 2 million. And it's only March 1940. Over a quarter of a million sunk per month. 
So we're almost at 90% of what we need for victory. Check out the list here of ships that have been lost or sunk. Quite a few. Not really for the Germans, but for the British loads. Right, well, that is all from Admiral Playerovsky for this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next video, and bye-bye for now.